down to the internet. stuff here, but like, here we are. I wanted something a little bit more modern. There we go. Yeah, once you start busting out the... I got it. Also, I set this uh, empty sink to the channel so they change the board. Stage come down? Now the stage is not a That's that's definitely we definitely lost light on the stage. Okay, will you please take your seats? Everybody take your seats and fasten your seat belts because we're going on a wild ride. Good afternoon and welcome to Music at the Mint brought to you by the Jazz Foundation of America and the Jazz Museum right here in downtown New Orleans. How's everybody doing? 
Yeah? All right, I guess that's okay. We appreciate you being here. It's great to have a live audience here in the studio. We appreciate uh, this being streamed worldwide through our partners and their Facebook pages. And we're talking about the Louisiana Music Factory and Offbeat Publications. I'm Jason Patterson from the Snug Harbor Jazz Bistro. You been there? Good. That's the correct answer. All right. And I'm here to tell you a couple of, a couple of things about the Jazz Foundation of America before we get into this wonderful music we're just about to have. The uh, Jazz Foundation has been working tirelessly in this community and so, place, so many other places. Uh, South Louisiana, they've been helping out Lake Charles and New York, you name it, they're there because they want to help musicians. And we're not talking about jazz musicians, we're talking about all sorts of different musicians that have been going through all these different trials and tribulations. You know, we've had a couple of, a couple of hurricanes here and we've had this pesky thing called the pandemic, you know, it's kind of hurt their uh, pocketbook, you know, there's not a lot of safety nets for musicians, just their girlfriends. <laughs> so uh, Jazz Foundation is there, there, there for them in so many ways, and we're talking about me medical assistance, we're talking about legal assistance, we're talking about housing, we're talking about providing performance opportunities like the one that you're here today for. So, anytime you're in front of a computer and you feel like uh, going up on jazzfoundation.org, we'd appreciate if you consider uh, making a donation so they can help even more. What do you think? Give it up for the Jazz Foundation. What a bunch. Speaking of exciting things, We've got the Larry Seabirth Ensemble tonight, and Larry is quite the chameleon, the musical chameleon. He is so good at composing, performing, arranging, producing. What else, Mick? What else does he do? Well, we won't go there. He does so many things, and uh, he tends to be beside, behind the scenes, so it's so great to have him profiled today. And he has a wonderful band with him. Give it up for Doug Bloat on the drums. <laughs> Boom. <Yeah. laughs> Those days are gone. Amina Scott's on the bass. Rex Gregory is, uh, what are you playing today, Rex? Multiple, multiple things, starting with these three things. There he is, the Silver Fox. Give it up for Lawrence Seabird and his ensemble.
just I can't tell you what a pleasure it is for me to be here performing for you with these amazing musicians. Please give it up. <laughs> On the drums, Mr. Doug Below. Amina Scott on the bass. And Rex and I go way back, and he left us for a moment, realized he needed to come back. So please give it up for Rex Gregory. So we lost an icon here in New Orleans right after the pandemic, Mr. Ellis Marsalis. And just to give you a little bit of my history, Ellis Marcellus used to teach at NOCA back before the, when the building was uptown. And I used to sub for him there. When Katrina hit, he was teaching at UNO, and uh, he left UNO to go to Loyola, so I took his place at UNO. I heard something, and you know, I was like, wow. Um, and then, uh, so then Ellis left UNO. I mean, yeah, so I took Ellis's place at UNO. So I've been following in his giant footsteps, and so when he passed, I wrote a song um, that I call One for Ellis. So here's that, um, I think. Um, <laughs> When I was born, they didn't tell me that my body was going to outlive my eyesight.
That was a song entitled Country by the amazing pianist Keith Jarrett. I'm going to continue with another amazing musician. I was reading something recently about uh, Lenny Tristano who started his own jazz school and is kind of one of those jazz greats that's not recognized for his immense contribution to the art form. But he said that it was important for musicians to do more than just learn the changes and emulate their heroes. And there's something about trying to get beyond the, the, the importance and influence of your heroes. But I must say, Keith Jarrett and Chick Corea are two of my favorites. And um, if I can even come close, I think I've achieved something in my life. But we're going to continue with a Chick Corea tune entitled Humpty Dumpty.
since I was a teenager, and this is a song that I originally composed back in 1984, for those of you who might have lived that year. That was the year the uh, World's Fair was here. And it's just become uh, now that I understand how to play some of this material that I wrote back then. And so here's one that I've renamed Scarlet River. Well, I had to wait for you to get here to, to play this correctly.
I'm glad you made it here, Rex. Um, oh, well, glad you made it. Glad you made it to Earth here. Hey, we've had a really good time playing for you today. So we got time for one more. So do you want one in 4-4 four four or 7-4? Seven 7-4. Four? Seven four. Oh, hey, wow. What a crowd. <laughs> stump, the, stump the band. <laughs> okay, we'll send this one out to all you dancers out there.
Doug Bloat on the drums. Amina Scott on the bass. Rex Gregory on sax and flute. My name is Larry Siebert. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. And thank you to the Jazz Museum and the Jazz Foundation. And thank you, our sound guys and our light guys and our video guys. Thank you.